Hi everyone, I'm Liam, one of the developers here at Archipelago, where we create Lightroom presets and creative profiles for photographers. And in this video, we're taking a look at an exciting new update to Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw that introduces the preset amount slider. With this feature, you can set the intensity of a preset using a simple slider that ranges from zero through to 200. So let's dive in and take a look at how it works. For this video, I'll be focusing on Lightroom Classic, but it's worth noting that this feature is also available in the regular version of Lightroom, Adobe Camera Raw, and even Lightroom Mobile. In order to take advantage of this new feature, you need to be running the latest version of Adobe software. So in this case, that's Lightroom Classic version 11.4 or Camera Raw version 14.4. Once you're up to date, you'll find the new slider on the left-hand side at the very top of the presets panel. This makes sense as it's gonna set the intensity of the preset, but might take a little bit of getting used to as we're generally accustomed to all the adjustment tools being on the right side of Lightroom. As you can see, the slider is currently grayed out and that's because I haven't yet applied a preset to this photo. So let's go ahead and edit this photo with a preset from our or collection. So I like the look of or seven, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply the preset. Now you can see that the preset name has appeared at the top and the slider has become active. So the default amount is set to 100 and you can now increase or decrease the amount as desired. Although it's a simple slider, it's actually really, really impressive what it's doing in the background. So it's actually adjusting all of these sliders within the preset in unison. So if I increase this a little bit and then we take a look at the basic panel over here, you can see that all of those sliders have moved. And if I undo that change, you can see them move back. So it's really, really powerful in the way that this is working. And actually you can see just how powerful if we come down here to the tone curve. So this is the default tone curve when this preset is applied. But if I go ahead and make any adjustment to the amount slider, you can see that it actually creates a custom tone curve to reflect that change. So incredibly powerful, really, really impressive. Uh, certain things in the develop module are unaffected by the amount slider, such as exposure, white balance, lens corrections, transform and calibration. And also any sliders that are set to zero will also remain unaffected. It's worth pointing out that if you make any adjustments to the sliders in the develop module other than the ones I just mentioned, you'll actually no longer be able to adjust the preset amount slider, it will gray that out. So you do need to make sure that you adjust the amount slider first, set that where you want it, and then go ahead and make tweaks in the develop panel. So this is obviously really useful to set the intensity of a preset, but where it gets really interesting is when it's used in conjunction with the tools that are included with many of our collections. Let's start by using one of the oxidized tonal adjustment tools here in the OR collection. So we have six of these tonal adjustment tools and they're designed to work in conjunction with the preset. So we have a quick look through these. I'm digging six, I think that looks really nice uh, in terms of what it's doing to the greens in the foliage. So I'm gonna select that preset. And now you can see that we have a slider at the top that's specifically for oxidized six. So now I can decrease or increase that particular effect. So in this case, I quite like it. Increase a little bit, a little pop of color and a nice rich warmth and those greens. So I'm gonna set that to 125. And we can even do the same with the grain. So we have the grain tools here that are called sediment in the ore collection. So if I go ahead and zoom in on this image, we have sediment one, two, and three. So let's say I really like the look of sediment three with this large grain size and the roughness of it, but actually I don't want it to be quite as intense. I want to reduce the amount. So I'm gonna select the sediment three preset. And now we have that slider again at the top where I can decrease or increase the amount. So it maintains the same structure of the grain in terms of roughness and size. It's just increasing or decreasing the amount. So I'm gonna bring that down to right about there. And that looks great. So obviously we could do that before by going into the effects panel and adjusting the amount slider, but now we can actually do it as soon as we've applied the grain preset. We can jump up here and set the intensity. Now let's go further by adding a tool that uses the mask function. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a prism effect from Quest Tools 04. Uh, this emulates the look of prisms using the mask tools within Lightroom. So I'm gonna select one of these, let's go for Prism 7. And now that I've selected the prism, you can see that that amount slider has appeared at the top left again. But not only that, if we head over to the mask panel itself and select this mask layer, you can see there's now also a new amount slider at the top of the mask tools. So I can set this exactly where I like, make any adjustments and we're good to go. So the last thing I'm gonna do with this particular image, just to finish it off, is I'm gonna use a tool from Archipelago Quest 15 Opalescent, and that tool is called Dreamy. This adds a nice soft haziness to the image. So if I go ahead and apply this particular tool, and now you can see we've got that amount slider again at the top. I'm just gonna decrease that a little bit just to kind of give it a little bit more of a subtle effect. Somewhere around there I think looks good to me, and that's the final image. 
there we have it, the preset amount slider. It's one of the most powerful and exciting features to come to Lightroom, and we're really excited to see what possibilities it enables, both for us as developers and you, our community of photographers. If you're interested in learning more about our wide range of presets and creative profiles, head over to archipelagopresets.com. And if you want to see more editing tutorials like this, along with gear reviews, quick tips, shooting techniques, and live streams, make sure to subscribe to our channel. And of course, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.